So I have here a list of mountain bike terms that people either get confused or pronounce completely wrong. And this is interesting because I don't speak perfectly. I'll be the first person to admit that. And furthermore, I grew up on Long Island. And so I'm used to hearing people butcher the English language constantly. I'm gonna start off with one that actually bothers me. It makes my skin crawl has to do with suspension. So even casual mountain bikers are familiar with a variety of suspension terms, sag, air pressure, compression damping, rebound damping, dampers. You gotta stop calling it dampening. I'm embarrassed for people when they call it dampening. Do you know what dampening is? Suspension dampening. I'm dampening my suspension. Just get it good and damp, dampen it. The only reason I'm doing this is because a lot of you are gonna thank me. You're cringing now that you know that you said that. Dampening is to make something damp. Damping is reducing the amplitude of an oscillation. Damping is a suspension term. Damper and damping is the correct term. You have your compression damping, your rebound damping. Your damper is what causes all the damping to take place, but yeah, it's damping, not dampening. While we're up here at the fork, these are not your forks, it's your fork. I heard people make the same mistake when I was in the mobile electronics industry. People would be like, yeah, I got 20% tints on my car. It's not tints, it's tint. And to say that these are your forks is also wrong. This is your fork. It's one unit and it's called a fork. Now this next one, I rarely hear actual cyclists get wrong. This is not your crossbar, it's your top tube. And that one's not as egregious because I think people who don't know about bikes don't know that there's an actual word for this and it kind of makes sense to call it a crossbar, but it's a top tube. Sprocket, chain ring. These are not interchangeable terms. The chain ring goes up front and sprockets are individual cogs in your cassette. Now, I distinctly remember back when I rode BMX, they never called the chain ring up front a chain ring. It was always called a sprocket. I've never heard it referred to that way on a mountain bike. Up front, it's a chain ring and anything in the rear is a sprocket or a cog. While we're on this topic, this is a cassette and this is a freewheel. Now, the fact that this has one cog on it is not what makes it a freewheel. A freewheel can have just as many cogs as a cassette. What makes it a freewheel is that the whole mechanism, including the bearings and the pawls, are all built into the same mechanism, and it screws onto the bike. On a cassette, there are no bearings or any movable parts. It actually slides onto a free hub that has all that built into it. So this is a cassette, and then if you can hold it and spin it on the bench, it's a freewheel. Maybe I'm nitpicking, this is not your shifter cable, it's your shifter housing. The shift cable is inside of it. This is your shift cable. And while we're up here, this isn't your brake cable. It's your brake hose if you have hydraulic disc brakes. And if you had cable actuated brakes, it also wouldn't be your brake cable, It'd be your brake housing. Here's one I had to look up. Handlebar or handlebars. Are these your handlebars or is it your handlebar? Both are correct. You can use either one. So however you were saying it is fine. There are more like that. People bust my balls about this one all the time. Is this a derailleur or a derailleur? It's actually, you can say both. It's a derailleur or a derailleur. It actually depends on where you're from. It seems like people in Britain all seem to call it a derailleur. I call it a derailleur and that's okay. It's just a different pronunciation. Now this next one isn't as much subject to mispronunciation as much as it is just complete confusion. Clipless pedals. These are clipless pedals. You know, the kind that you clip into, they're called clipless pedals. Makes no sense whatsoever to call them that in 2023, but like most things in the English language that make no sense, it's derived from an older term. So there used to be these big cages with straps that you would actually put your shoe into and strap down. And when they invented these, they said, oh, it's clipless. And so now they are forever clipless pedals, even though they're the ones you clip into. This one doesn't actually get talked about much, but this is your bottom bracket 
This is your bottom bracket shell. What's the difference? Well, the bottom bracket consists of two bearings with a crank spindle going through it, and the bottom bracket shell is the part of the actual bike frame that encloses it. Now, the interesting part is that a crank set consists of two crank arms and a crank spindle, whereas a bottom bracket consists of two bearings and a spindle. And so the spindle is both part of the bottom bracket and the crank set. And so it's confusing even for me when I'm referring to this area, I just call it the bottom bracket, but it actually consists of the bottom bracket shell and the bottom bracket bearings. And if you combine the bottom bracket bearings with the crank spindle, it's called the bottom bracket. So if you've been in the game for a little bit, you've probably used one of these chain wear indicators to see how much your chain has stretched out. Is your chain really stretching? I am guilty as charged of using this term as well, and it's not really incorrect to say your chain stretched, but it's not actually stretching. It's actually those little pins inside the rollers just getting sloppy and moving around more, and so it causes the illusion of stretching, but really, your chain just worn out and it's time for a new one. The chain's not actually stretching, even though it is technically getting a little bit longer. Regardless, I'm gonna keep saying that the chain stretched out. Public service announcement, this is a wheel. Now I don't see as many people get this one wrong, but I've heard in the last year, yeah, my, my tire's bent. Uh, my rim is bent would technically be true, a lot of people refer to this entire unit here as a rim, it's a wheel. This is your tire, this is your rim, these are your spokes, and this is your hub. They're all part of a wheel. This is your dropper seat post, not your seat post dropper. Now, I'm actually not even sure how incorrect this is, but I hear a lot of people, usually old people, calling this a seat post dropper, and I've never heard a company call it that. I've never heard a mechanic call it that. So he's called a dropper seat post. And so I guess public service announcement, I don't care what you call it. One of the most important adjustments you're gonna make to your suspension is setting your sag. Sag and preload are not the same thing. Sag is the result, right? How much your suspension is sagging down when you are sitting on the bike Preload is one way you might adjust your sag. Now on an air fork, we usually just refer to it as air pressure and on like a Suntour fork with a coil in it, you twist the little thing that says preload. Adjusting your preload will affect your sag. There's a lot of other things that might affect your sag, like how much gear you have on, your body position, your stack height, but you adjust your sag with your preload. And so one does not set their preload. You use your preload to achieve the proper sag. Does that make sense? This next one ruined my life. This is not a dropout. It's a fork end. This is a dropout. You use to differentiate a fork end from a dropout is not the fact that on a fork end you can adjust the chain tension by moving the wheel in and out. A fork end requires that you derail the chain to remove the rear wheel. A dropout, you can remove the rear wheel without derailing the chain. It just seems like an odd distinction, but fork ends and dropouts. So this is a pedal. Anyone care to guess what this little part is, this little bolt that fits into your crank arm? It's the axis. Usually I call it a spindle and I doubt that anybody is gonna correct you on this one, but it's called an axis. So there you go. Which ones have you guys been getting wrong? I've gotten fork end wrong for years. I've gotten pedal axis wrong in multiple videos. Even though I knew the correct term, I'll, I'll just say it the other way. And so there you go. Bicycle wrong speak. I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive into terminology that people get wrong. I really do wanna hear what you were getting wrong and I wanna hear ones that I didn't mention today. Hope you found this all useful and informative and if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.